All right, welcome to the Real Property Investment Lunchtime Wealth Webinar, where you can join us every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a free 60-minute Lunchtime Wealth Webinar featuring a different guest speaker every week. My name is Monica Jazik. I'm a real estate investment specialist and wealth builder and owner of Real Property Investments, where we help real people build real wealth through real estate and alternative investments. We've helped over 800 people achieve freedom in their lives by building wealth. And our goal is to empower as many people as possible to take action and start doing things differently in regards to wealth building so you could live and be able to afford your absolute best life. Today, we'll be speaking with KWC's top agent, Matt Pichet. Matt is a leading real estate agent, agent in Kitchener as well as an experienced investor and owner of multiple income properties in the KW area. On today's webinar, Matt will be discussing the proven real estate model he created and has personally used in KWC, giving himself and hundreds of other investors fruitful ROI, even with single family homes. Welcome, Matt, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's start off with you telling a bit about your background and sort of how you got into the real estate business, because you've made quite a name for yourself uh, over the past few years of being in real estate. Yeah, so right after high school, I got into the trade. So my dad was a carpenter, his dad was a carpenter, so I just kind of fell into it. So that's what I did right after high school. And then I started my own business when I completed my apprenticeship, uh, renovating properties only for real estate investors. And the more I renovated for more investors, while I enjoyed that, they all said the same thing. I wish you were a real estate agent. The realtors I'm working with don't know anything about renovations, how to calculate for cash flow, how to add value. You already know how to do all of this. I wish you were my realtor. And I kind of knew that I didn't want to be a carpenter for the rest of my life, you know, backbreaking labor. That wasn't really my ideal lifestyle. So I thought about it and it, you know, the switch from becoming to a carpenter to a realtor made perfect sense for me. I was still obsessed with real estate investing. It fell in line with what I wanted to do anyway, which was to be a real estate investor, not a carpenter for the rest of my life. So I completed my courses uh, super quick, got my real estate license in about four months. I just crammed through the courses. Wow. And then uh, it's been that way ever since. Since 21, 22 years old, I've been a realtor specializing only with real estate investors in Kitchener Waterloo. That's quite a story. Now, were you raised in Kitchener-Waterloo area? So I was pretty much raised in Kitchener. I was born in North Bay, but we moved down to Kitchener when I was about five or six. So I don't really have any memories of up north too much. It's all been Kitchener-Waterloo. So this really is your area of expertise. I mean, you yeah. were five yeah. years old. You were pretty much raised there. This is, this is really strong familiarity with this area. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and I think being a carpenter really, really kind of helps, you know, it helps people yeah. um, in real estate, I, especially if you're doing sort of opportunities where you are adding value, like that forced appreciation to the home. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, when we, we have to outsource these things and, and find our own contractors, you have contractors walking up the job or overpaying or not sure. doing a great job. It's always really, really stressful for us as an investor, for sure. Yeah, it's the one benefit I have 100% because I know when we do a lot of renovations, I know what the properties or what the reno should cost, how much uh, the material should be, what it should look like when it's done, etc. So I know when a contractor is kind of trying to take us for a ride or whatever. So that's a huge benefit that I have. Excellent, excellent. And so back to this thing. So you finished high school, you're like about what, 17, 18 years old? Yep. Yeah, and 17. Right into the trades. Yeah, right into the trades. And then I became a realtor, like I said, around 22. And then I bought my first rental property uh, at age 22. It was a small condo townhome for 135,000. Uh, we rented that out for about six months while we still lived at home. And then Rachel and I bought our second property six months later, another condo townhome in the same complex. So we lived there for a bit. And then I kind of didn't buy anything for a good four or five years. I had no more money. I was a, mm -hmm. a carpenter just starting out to be a realtor. I was really young, didn't have any more capital. And that's when I started really working on the social media marketing and online marketing. I know we'll probably be talking about that. It's a separate webinar. That's a whole thing in itself. But that's really what uh, got my portfolio to grow so quickly is online marketing, social media, and branding. And I can't wait to talk about that in another webinar, maybe. 
Oh yeah, we'll do a totally specialized webinar on that, but we definitely, everyone should be following you on social media if they're not already. And we could definitely explore, explore our social media as well on this. Um, let's go back to that. So 22 years old, already a, an owner of not one, but two properties. Yeah. What did you learn? Like, did you make any mistakes on those purchases? Now that you know everything you know now, what would you have yeah. kind of done differently if you look back? Yeah, surprisingly, we didn't make any major mistakes. I was already researching real estate investing when I was like 18, 19 years old, totally obsessed with it. So I kind of knew what I was doing. So we bought good properties in good areas. We still own them both today. So they're making us quite a lot of money. But uh, the only mistake I made at the very beginning was the tenant I got the first time. They were a little sketchy. I didn't really know how to uh, like overview tenants or interview tenants. So I got kind of a bad one. Uh, he left within three to four months after moving in, but he paid all of his rent. There was no damage. So luckily it was a good situation, but that was kind of the worst thing so far that's ever happened in our real estate portfolio was that kind of bad tenant who almost took advantage of us but I was able to get him out, get a new tenant, and that's when I really started educating myself even more, especially as I started working with other real estate investors and going to rain. Then I kind of knew what, what I was doing a little more. And then ever since then, it's just been mostly single family, super easy, super boring, no headaches, no major things going on. So that's why I like it. <laughs> and that's probably why your experience has been pretty uneventful because I remember yeah. you know, when we started out with single family, it was really easy, you know, and I think you get a different type of qu tenant quality when you get a single family tenant. And then yeah. of course we did all the courses, went way overboard, started doing all different strategies and, yeah. you know, got into apartment buildings and multifamily and all these things. And, you know, the problems kind of did seem to sort of escalate. So yeah. single family really kind of seems to be the way to go. Yeah. The only problem is the way we do our real estate investment models, and I know we're about to talk about your model, is it really is tough to get a single family home to cash flow, yeah. especially in a high growth area like KW. Is it still possible to acquire these types of properties? Yeah, so we're finding properties every day of the week in Kitchen Waterloo, single families that cash flow. The range is going to be between $100 to $200 a month after property manager. So to some people, that might seem that's way too low. There's no way I'm going to do that for $100 measly dollars. You have to wait with single family. It's a long-term strategy. You're not going to get rich off single family today, but you will in 10, 12, 15 years. You're going to be super rich from it if you have a multiple amount of them. And that's the secret with single family. So if you want to quit your job like today, what I always tell people is you probably want to go to multifamily or student properties, et cetera. But if you can wait, you know, five, seven years, buy a bunch of single families in a good area like Kitchener, Waterloo, Hamilton, Barrie, et cetera, and just wait, have patience, because you'll be happy you did. Well, I totally agree. And that's the message at Real Property Investments that we preach with the buy rent pool is, um, you know, and $100, $200 is nothing to, um, you know, put your nose up at. Sure. Because, you know, that's after all the contingencies and yeah. all that sort of stuff as well. So exactly. technically you are getting more, but you're, you're doing a conservative return, which is always yeah. really good. And we always say that, you know, buy, rent, hold is a long-term wealth play. And this really yeah. should be for bigger ticket items in life, like say your retirement or your kid's uh, education, or maybe if you are looking to leave a job, um, it can be income replacement for a period of time yeah. after you have time to sort of pay down the mortgage and um, get some equity in that property. I think a mistake a lot of people make in real estate is they call buy, rent, hold, real estate investing uh, active, sorry, passive, yeah. when it really is an active yeah. investment. And you know, it should not, you cannot chase the cash flow and yeah. you know, replace your day job with you know, buy, rent, hold, real estate. It really is a long-term wealth play. Yeah. You are looking to replace your income or you know, create more passive income, there's different strategies that you can use, uh, like say flipping, or you can do rent to owns, or, you know, even investing in private market products or private lending. Yeah. And those are all great, um, but they don't have the long-term exactly. wealth building that single family, um, or even sorry, any buy, rent, hold investing yeah. really does. And they often end up, unless you're going in different areas, and sometimes the, the appreciation's not there, but Kitchener is a fantastic area. Can you tell us more 
like why Kitchener is a great place? Yeah. So it's, how it's evolved over the past few years? Yeah, Kitchener is one of those uh, towns that's often overlooked. For some reason, it kind of flies under the radar, which is perfect for us. That's kind of what we want. We don't want droves of people coming to Kitchener Waterloo. But one of the biggest reasons is that it's actually a big city. Over four or 540,000 people live here when combining Waterloo, Cambridge, and Kitchener. So it's actually a big area, lots going on. As many people probably know, we're called the Technology Triangle. So a lot of tech companies are coming here, putting their money into Kitchener Waterloo. You know, the founder of Twitter started a business here. We have Google here. So there's a lot of hype around Kitchener Waterloo for the tech industry. Uh, lots of the universities are, like I said, are expanding their tech programs, attracting more international students. So there's a lot of money coming here. In terms of industries, uh, manufacturing and trade is actually one of our biggest um, industries. So even though the hype is all talking about the tech industry and the universities, you know, over 30% of our workers are actually in manufacturing or trade of some sort because we're right along the 401. We're an hour away from Toronto, an hour from Hamilton, an hour from London. So we're in that sweet spot. And that's really the biggest thing for us is good quality tenants. So the manufacturing and, and uh, trade uh, industries are more blue collar workers. And there's nothing wrong with blue collar workers, they're my best tenants, but they often mm -hmm. tend to be more so tenants than owners. So we have a big, big tenant pool here and also a big education sector. So Kitchener is really diverse in terms of industries. So if there's a recession coming, which you know we're kind of thinking in the next year or so, there's probably gonna be a recession of some sort. You know, Kitchener is a very safe uh, haven for something like that because we have so many different big industries. And I personally started investing in Kitchener in 2010, which was apparently the biggest depression since the Great Depression, right? Yeah. Nothing happened in Kitchener Waterloo. We had some setbacks, but in terms of jobs, tenants paying rent, I never ever had a problem. Kitchener just kind of did its thing through the recession. And that's why I really like parking my money here because it's very safe with lots of industries. Yeah, it definitely has a lot of uh, diversity yeah. and a lot of those key economic uh, indicators that this is a great place to invest. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's well-rounded. We don't have a, a one-hit pony kind of industry. Like, uh, it could be a car manufacturing industry. That's all that town has. You want to avoid investing in areas like that for long-term, especially for long-term. Like I say to a lot of people, right now we're in a boom economy. We have been for a while. So everybody looks like a genius. Wherever they're invest investing in Ontario, everybody's doing really well. Are they going to do really well in two, three years when we're in the next recession? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But in Kitchener-Waterloo, we're kind of protecting ourselves that way. The other, the other bonus is depreciation. So because Kitchener just does its thing through the recessions, through everything, it just kind of grows at a slow pace, normally. Five percent every single year, no matter what. We don't have the big spikes and the big drops like Toronto or Ottawa or other big cities like that. It just kind of does its thing. People just kind of forget about it. But over time, that's really gonna what's what's gonna make you wealthy. So we're also still a bargain compared to the GTA in terms of house prices. We'll get into that uh, in a bit, but the average single family price that we're still finding every single day of the week is between 340,000 to 370. That's the sweet wow. spot for a single family. So you're not going to find that in Milton, Mississauga, Brampton, et cetera. So we're still very cheap compared to that. And then transportation. So there's a lot of uh, capital and growth happening in Kitchener with more trains going to Toronto, right? The light rapid transit is just about finished up in Kitchener. That's also bringing a lot of hype and money to the area. So there's big things happening in Kitchener, mm. um, which is great for a long-term buy and hold. If you buy now and you wait 10 years as the city continues to grow, it's gonna be pretty good. This really makes, can you go back to that transport slide? Yeah. That really makes a lot of sense. Um, the reason how the go is like going to all these, these smaller cities yeah. Um, because, you know, like you said, the, the housing is just not affordable in Toronto or the GTA anymore. I mean, we're averaging a million dollars for a townhouse and yes. it's, it's just, and that's all surrounding like anything one hour from, from yeah. Toronto. So it's so important that these go stations, I mean, people, you know, if they want to live in these areas, a lot of these people have to rent and that's expensive as well. They could buy a place in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge or yeah. any of these surrounding areas and put their money towards an actual home for, for a less than they would actually even having to be paying 
for rent here. So I think that's really important. You have a very healthy housing economy. And if a recession does hit, it really probably won't impact because your housing is really is quite affordable. We're here where we live, say, in Markham and outside outside the GTA. We're the ones that really kind of felt that, yeah. you know, the, the any sort of downturn in the economy because exactly. people here can't even afford their mortgages, um, yeah. you know, already. So that's great that the transport is so phenomenal because people, it's pretty common for people to commute up to two hours a day each yeah. way. Insane. How long is it? Um, how long did you say it was to get to downtown, the downtown core? From the outside or outskirts of Kitchener to the downtown core, maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on where you are. And going back to your point, we're already seeing a lot of Toronto buyers moving to Kitchener because the housing is cheaper and they're commuting, driving every single day, which is like three hours, four hours per day in total drive time. So once these trains get up and going, you know, every hour on the hour, which right now there's only two trains per day, it's really going to be a game changer because a lot more people from Toronto, from the GTA are going to start moving to Kitchener, forcing prices up. So that's why you kind of want to get in now before the trend comes in because over the next five, 10 years, Kitchener is going to look probably very different. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I've seen it happen in Oshawa already when we were used to investing there in homes that like under $200,000 and now with the development in North Oshawa, properties are, you know, 800,000 plus. Crazy. So it, it's just amazing. I can't, I wouldn't be surprised if Kitchener, you know, was in the five, six hundred thousand dollar range yeah. uh, within five years time. Definitely. Very likely. So we also have a good, strong pool of tenants because there's lots of jobs. It's a very diverse economy. If something does happen in the economy, you know, if uh, the auto industry gets hit really hard, but well, we have a big trade depot, we have a big education sector, we have big insurance companies. So there's lots of different um, industries where if one gets hit, many can pick up the load, which is exactly what we saw with BlackBerry, right? A couple years ago when BlackBerry went under, everybody thought Kitchener Waterloo was doomed. We were done for. There was no way we could recover. Literally nothing happened when BlackBerry went under. It was just more psychological and actually even more tech industries bought up their buildings and made more companies. So we're very diverse here. It's super easy to fill properties. When I'm renting my properties or helping clients, it's really one to two weeks probably before you find a tenant. If your house is well done, it looks nice, you're gonna attract tenants very easily and probably getting bidding wars on a lot of your rentals, which actually happened to a couple of ours, which is insane. We're seeing bidding wars in the rental market, which is really good for us investors. Mm -hmm. So, What would you say the actual vacancy rate is now? like 1.5 but literally it's zero if you have a nice property that looks really well you're going to attract a tenant no easily easily so i'll go over kind of the properties that we do so a semi-detached property in kitchener's my bread and butter that's what most of my clients buy uh, with my partners as well we're buying these types all the time and you can see how uh how renovated we do it so we always fully renovate a property top to bottom if you want to see the videos, you can go to my YouTube channel. I have a video of every single before and after renovation we've ever done. So if you want to see more than just pictures, head over there and check them out. But like I said, this is the bread and butter. This is what we buy all the time. Price range between 340 for one that needs some work to 370 for one that's kind of turnkey. This is really nice. It's done really well. It looks very clean. Um, would you say this is more of a high-end reno or is it more... Uh, middle of the range reno. This would be slightly above middle of the range, but not fully high. So maybe the middle between mid and high, uh, high level. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we do. We have a system. We use the same flooring, the same paint, the same baseboards over and over again. And it's proven. We've, we, we get the tenants every single time. We get the rents that we want. So we just go through and do it over and over again. And it's working really well. So it looks like um, I love the modern appeal with, you know, the, the cabinetry, um, you went an extra step with the stainless steel appliances, which yeah, is great. Definitely. Do you go to the extent where you do like a granite or a quartz, or are you still um, using just the nice, um, yeah. normal countertops? So we use a nice, normal laminate countertop. We usually never do a quartz in a rental just because they can stain quite easily and it's quite hot costly to fix them or if they break the countertop. So but what we do is we use a flat countertop. So if you can see in the corner against the backsplash, there's no backsplash on the, on the counter. We're bringing mm -hmm. the tiles right down. So it gives the effect that it's a quartz countertop looking style. So that adds a little bit more. It costs a little bit extra, but it's totally worth it. It really makes it feel higher end. 
And so when you rent out units that look like this, and I love the fact that you have a like a reno system, we have for our apartment buildings, we totally do that. It's just yeah. like, you know, carbon copy for every unit. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it makes it a lot easier. Um, what sort of tenants would you say this attracts? Is this for your, you know, working class tenant, like a really great person? Yeah. Um, they're more like into the trades or working class. Or is this something like, are you going to get like a millennial couple lawyer that's kind of commuting to Toronto every day? So slightly both, but with these styles with the single families, it's usually a blue collar family. Um, maybe the husband's in blue collar work, the wife's in white collar work. They're making between, you know, 50 to $70,000 a year uh, for their job. That's kind of the ideal tenant that we're going for for these. We do have a couple of duplexes, which I'll show in a second, where they're much higher end, more downtown, and those are geared more towards millennials, lawyer types, and we, do, we go a little higher end on those rentals as well. But for these single families, it's kind of for your everyday Joe, nice family, two kids, dog, cat, we want the whole thing, because then they stay for a long time. So how long do you normally find these tenants staying? Like, because I remember when we started out in, in real estate investing, our avatar really was like the working class tenant that just never yeah. would have a hope in hell of being a homeowner. So they're yeah. a lifelong renter and hopefully they stay forever and ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, would this person, if they both have say $50,000 a year, is that their total family income or is that kind of what they mean? That's per person usually. So 50,000 50, 50, per person. Um, so these tenants stay usually between three to five years. That's what we're seeing all the time. And on these semis, we have a bunch of them. And some of the tenants have been there for six years. The first tenant we ever got on them, and they're still there. So they, they tend to stay long term. Do they have the inclination to become home, homeowners? So like while they're renting from you, they're kind of building up their credit or saving those down payments so they actually buy something in the area? Yeah, so a lot of them say they, they want to be homeowners now that I think of it. But we really haven't had anybody leave to become homeowners. Mm -hmm. They have to stay or they maybe find another rental property. Maybe they had a kid, they need more room, but they're still renting. So we haven't really seen a tenant in turnover to buy something yet. Interesting. Well, this looks great. Fabulous. Show us the high rent, high end downtown. Yeah. Well, I'll go over the numbers first on this single family, yeah. just so you know what to expect if you uh, buy something in Kitchener. So we bought this property a year and a half ago for 185. We put in 37,000 in renovations. You know, with holding costs and closing costs, uh, sorry, renovation of 30,000, our all in purchase, our all in cost was 73,000 to buy it. That's still 20% down and to renovate. It is now worth today, a year and a half later, 360,000. So we did have a big spike in the past couple of years. This is not gonna be typical for the next two years in terms of growth, but it's still a lot of growth. Um, our total profit so far is 150,000 in just two years from forced equity and depreciation. So that's kind of what we're seeing in the area. Our monthly cost, if we switch over to the monthly financials, you know, our mortgage payment is $885, property taxes, insurance, our property manager of $8250. Yes, we always get a property manager for all of our properties just so we can live our life while the business does this thing in the background. Currently, the rent is $1,700. So we're cash flowing on this single family for $483. So this is what I'm saying. Because when we first bought the property, people were saying, you're only buying this property for $100 cash flow? Yeah. That's so stupid. Wait long term with single family. The rents go up faster than multifamily. The appreciation goes up faster. So now in year, you know, year two, we're up to 400. Again, that's not typical for the next two years likely, but it's probably about $100 a year in terms of rental increase in a normal market. So if you wait five years, six years, 10 years, that's when single family really becomes attractive. Because one tenant, super high quality, they pay their rent every single month, and we're getting that 400 bucks every single month. And I cannot believe you bought this for $185,000. Yeah. Like, it's not realistic. Like, why didn't I buy this? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> we bought this right before the big spike kind of happened. So again, it's not typical, but it's fairly typical of what's going to happen in the long term. So well, I'll if anyone watching this has any questions about Matt's properties and the numbers, definitely like type it in the question box. I will be monitoring the question box. I'm sure people will have because I didn't even know you could get this for 185 and that is just phenomenal increase in yeah. value and you know and you know with that hold just the hold for yeah. five years it always takes five years at least five, yeah. you know sure. you're usually looking at that 30 percent ROI I mean just by paying down the mortgage every month and renting out the property I mean when I did the numbers on a $375,000 property appreciating at five percent over five years 
Yeah. And the, the rental, but the rental was only a few hundred bucks a month, maybe a couple hundred dollars cash flow. It only equated to twenty thousand dollars over the five years. Yeah, exactly. To the hundred and ten thousand dollars, you know, of the actual natural appreciation of yeah. the property, um, it turned out to be like over a thirty percent ROI. Yeah. And the amount of money you could pull out, you know, is about you know one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and this could be you know used for multiple things, such as to send your kids to school, or even if you take a property like this and do nothing but pay off the mortgage. For 25 years, yeah. this property at 5% increase would be not this one with the 180, but one that the the in the 360 mark is going to be 1. You know, 25 million dollars. Yeah. It's crazy. So people out there don't even need like 10 of these. Even for one sure. property like this is a huge, huge you know spike to your wealth plan for sure. Yeah, one single family like this for 10, 15 years, it'll completely change your life financially. Absolutely. So we'll switch over to the duplex right downtown that we bought. Um, this property was pretty much a new build. When we bought it, it was gutted right down to the studs. And we converted this big single family home downtown to a duplex. So we did everything pretty high end for a multifamily. Um, right downtown Kitchener, 300 meters from the light record transit station before it's up and running. So we got in there before it's going to be up and running. And this one was... A pretty good investment. This is the higher end that we're talking about. So the tenants in here are millennials. It was the exact tenant avatar we were looking for. And I think it turned out pretty good. Who chose that navy blue wall? <laughs> that was Rachel for the feature wall. I love it. I've never seen a navy blue wall that it makes such a huge impact. You can yeah. see where you have the same, you know, main colors, the same right. flooring, the same, you know, big trim. Yeah. Uh, and then that wall just makes it pop. And what is that counter? Is that counter still uh, like um, yeah. a laminate countertop or is yeah, that same a bit one. Longer? Same one. And then we do a breakfast bar in each kitchen. So if you see in the fourth picture in the bottom here, uh, we always do a countertop hangover for uh, like a breakfast bar. And that's what we started doing recently. So this renovation is more of our recent color scheme. And that's what we're trying to do in every property is get that breakfast bar. People really like that. Because it's a nice open concept. Yeah. Totally. It, it really kind of opens up the room. Yeah. Um, so you actually have a question here that I'm going to read out. Sorry to interrupt. Um, it's, hey, Matt, I love the single family rentals. I own two in London that meet the 1%. Yes. I was able to BRR the first one and will be refinancing the second one in the next couple of months. Excellent tenants that haven't caused any issues. I've been in Brazil the last three months, and the only messages from them have had email money transfers. I nice. love <laughs> Exactly. Love the more hands off with single family. If you renovate properly, nothing big breaks. First property purchased for 100K, 20K reno rents now for 129.5 plus. Second property, 135K purchased, 30K reno rents for 160 plus has been a huge impact on my financial life. Yeah. So that's thank you so much for sharing that because you know um, I totally agree. This model can even just one or two properties will change your entire wealth plan. And then we need your address in Brazil because we're all gonna come and see yeah, you. Definitely. Everyone on this webinar yeah. is gonna come see you in Brazil. Uh, yeah. We have one more question. Uh, it says, hi Matt, I didn't see a monthly cost for a down payment reno loan interest factored in. Do most of your investors you work with buy with cash? So most of them buy with cash. The one that we just checked out, this one was a mortgage on it but we did it in one month turnaround. So we had the holding costs here for 3000. So it wasn't too long. However, like this one, the duplex where we had to like pretty much rebuild it. Most of my partners buy properties all cash. So there's no mortgage, there's really no cost except for utilities and property tax. Um, so that's kind of what we do when we do a big flip. However, I still have partners that bring mortgages to buy these properties and they still work out very well. And we include those costs in the project fund. But after they buy this cash, don't they go in for a mortgage? Yes. Yeah, so we always get a mortgage after, I should say that. So every time we, when we're done, we get an appraisal at the higher value, we get a mortgage set at the highest value we can, and then I pay my partner back all of his money, hopefully all of his money. And so when you do that, how easy is it for you to create an infinite return? Meaning I'm able to give you cash to purchase yeah. the property and get the reno and then get a mortgage for the property where I actually get all of my capital back yeah. and I'm still making monthly cash flow even yeah. though I have no cash in the investment. 
Yeah, so today in this market, you can't really do that with a single family. We'll really never find a single family that low where we can jack it up that much. However, where we can do that still is with duplex conversions, which is what we're doing a lot more. And so we did with this property here. This is a duplex conversion. Um, so there we can almost always get all or most of the partner's money back. So that's even cool. if you get some of it back. Like let's pretend yeah. I give you, um, you know, three hundred thousand yeah. dollars for it, and we up this property to four hundred thousand dollars, and then I get a mortgage after for eighty exactly. percent of that amount. Maybe you have like ten or fifteen thousand dollars in, but if you divide that number, you know, over your initial ROI, yeah, this is right. where your cash on cash return just absolutely skyrockets. Yeah, so duplex conversions is where you really want to do this if you want to get your money back. Single families won't really work. It's just more of a good long-term buy and hold. But if we go over the numbers here for the duplex I'm talking about, this is where my partner got almost all his money back. I think he's only in this deal for about $6,000 when we're all done. So oh we bought it in 328. It was a private deal uh, from another investor that I know. He just wanted to unload it and move on to something else. So we bought it all cash. Holding costs took two months of renovation, so $6,000. Um, renovations were $110,000. So it was a major renovation to convert these. So our all-in cost was pretty much four fifty. We got it appraised two months later for five sixty-five. dollars So with the new mortgage, my partner, like I said, was in for about six dollars or $10,000 into the deal. And the equity we made in two months was $115,000. the parts appreciation. And I think that if you weren't a contractor or you don't have that building system, yeah. It's no not that you might be half of that. I think exactly. Yeah. You really have that competitive edge. Now this price, three twenty eight, is huge difference. And I know the market's going yeah. up and whatever. And yeah. this, this was a disaster house. You said disaster house. Yeah, it was a big detached house right downtown, and it pretty much needed to be bulldozed or rebuilt. We chose the rebuilt route. <laughs> well, once you always choose the rebuild route, even if you keep the one existing wall, you avoid your development charges. Exactly. Yes. Thousand dollars savings. So exactly. why not? So is the downtown core that desirable in Kitchener, um, you know, opposed to the outskirts? Yeah. So I always say, if you want to do multifamily, you're going to want to do it in a downtown core. Don't really ever buy single family downtown. It's the wrong tenant profile. Those tenants don't want to live down there. It's too busy, too much traffic, but the millennials or the multifamily tenants, that's where you want to do it. If you want to do single family, we do it on the outskirts. So far away from the LRT. So even though the LRT has a lot of, of, of hype and buzz around it, if you're doing single family, you want to be as far away from the LRT as possible. And that's where that tenant profile really does really well. So it depends which strategy you want to do and where you'll be buying. That's what I can help people with when they tell me they want to invest in Kitchener. Well, that's the beauty. And at, at our, our, you know, all of our agents like yourself that we work with, we say our, our agents, they live in the area, they work yeah. in the area and they invest in the area. Because exactly. people do not know, you know, the difference. Like it's yeah. these little things is what helps give you a competitive edge. You know your tenant profile. You know who wants to live where. You know what happens at Saturday, on Saturday night at 3 a.m. And you also know what happens on Sunday afternoons at 3 p.m. In yeah. each one of these types of areas. So I think it's yeah. like that, that familiarity with the area is so, so important uh, for people who – live in Toronto like me and they want to grow their money, but we don't know, you know, we just don't know the, the street by street breakdown in, in these areas. So yeah, it's the same for me. If I go to Toronto or if I go to London or even Guelph, which is 25 minutes away from Kitchener, I have no idea what I'm doing, what, where to buy, etc. So really work with experts in specific areas and focus in areas too. I think when yeah. people have their portfolio so scattered, yeah, um, it yes. really does tend to become a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. That's, that's one thing I'm kind of against this buying over here, buying over there, buying three hours over there. That's not really the style I preach or talk about. Just focus on one area. Like I say all the time, I only do Kitchener. I don't even buy in Guelph, which is 20 minutes away. Does it interest me? Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge only. And that's so funny because I'm sure like, you know, you and I were kind of on the real estate scene and you're surrounded by people that have multiple, multiple like properties and they're so everywhere. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you kind of remind me of us in the sense that we're sort of the boring yeah, for <laughs> sure. yeah. people. We have like tons boring. of properties. We're, we're obviously doing this full time. Yeah. But, well, you're sort of like, well, I just only do this in this one area. And then Vaughn and I are always saying, you you know, even if you have one property, you're further ahead of the game. For sure. I guess it kind of makes us the, 
the less exciting bunch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I like my business to be boring and I have fun in my life. We go to Hawaii, we go to Bali. That's what we do with the money from real estate. <laughs> Absolutely. Like you don't always want to be on the hunt searching yes. for income properties. Why aren't you out there? You know, I always say, you know, I'd rather be on the tennis court at yeah. this point rather than be hunting for, for real estate all the time. So that, I think that's a secret that a lot of people miss is if you're addicted to the hunt and to the yeah. chase and to becoming an expert on anything, everything like exactly. what are you truly hiding from yeah because if you're doing real estate right yeah you know it doesn't take much to be very very impactful and give you that freedom so you could live the life of your dreams because yeah. chasing properties all day long it's not a life that's a job yeah 100 percent. and like i even know a couple of investors uh that i meet all across canada or in the states and they're absolutely killing it but they're stuck in their town all year long. Even though they're making so much money from their business, they're still hustling harder than everybody else who just works a regular job. It makes no sense. There's something, like you said, something else going on. Um, you really want to have your life be fun from real estate. You know, don't be so obsessed with the business itself. That's not for me, but again, everybody has their own system or their own way of life. I really preach, you know, boring real estate and have fun in your life because of real estate. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Usually when, something's exciting in real estate, it's because something's going wrong. Yep, 100%. <laughs> Excellent. So here's another property, I, uh, we'll go through one more. This is a property we're closing on in a week, actually. So it's three townhomes and a detached home on one lot. Again, right downtown Kitchener. And we're actually uh, 300 meters away from this GO station in Kitchener. So wow. we're getting in before. So the LRT is there, the GO station to Toronto is there. So this is gonna be this was like a grand slam to me in terms of deals. I'm really excited for this one, but it's a problem property. All the tenants in here are super low quality. Um, we got some empty. Some of them are refusing to leave. So we'll be dealing with that, but this is what I avoid, right? So this is, this is why we don't do multifamily. So we're going to get them out. We're going to renovate all the units completely top to bottom and get that young millennial Google tenant, right? This is 500 meters from the Google headquarters in Kitchener. So it can't be better in terms of location. And the numbers on this one look really interesting. You know, we bought it for 730, even though it was kind of a crap hole. That's what we paid for all four properties. Again, all cash, my partners brought all the money to buy it all out, no mortgage, uh, holding costs in terms of utilities and just other holding costs, budgeting around 8,000. So renovations are $200,000 for all four properties. So like I said, we're going pretty all out. We're doing everything all over again. So the all-in purchase cost for this whole project is $950,000. Two months is what's going to take for this renovation. Contractors are already lined up. We're going to try and get it appraised for $1.3 million. And we're very confident in that. The cap rate really suggests that, that price for what we're going to get in terms of income coming up. This will be a commercial mortgage. So it's very different from residential where it's all about numbers. Numbers dictate value. So that's why we're very confident in the $1.3 million. So the total equity we're going to make in this project in two months is three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow! This property was on the market for over a year, and everybody overlooked it. Overlooked it. Thought it was a piece of crap. And this happens all the time, especially in multifamily, which is something I'm getting more so into is flipping multifamily and getting high-quality tenants. That's an avenue a lot of investors don't want to go down, but that's where you make bigger money, huh? like way bigger money. That's incredible. And you think that Reno Vision is two hundred thousand dollars? That's not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you go back to that slide again? I want to have a look at this again. This property. So, yeah. This is interesting because where is the? This is the single family house over here, right? Yeah. The, the, so the where is house. that situated? Is that like behind it, like a it's, different street? It's on the same lot, so it's just right beside it. This where, where the van is is a driveway for that specific house. The the parking spots for the townhomes are right here, right beside the van. So this is a detached house, and this is three townhomes. That's too bad if that you can't separate it and separate the parcels. Yeah. Now, have you ever thought of actually, and I've done this before, I had a similar uh, project like this in Oshawa, which was a couple of multifamilies and some single families. And we redid it. It was an L-shaped lot. And we actually um, created stacked townhomes yeah. all through it. So it ended up going in a big L-shape. And you could probably create like even four more units if you got rid of that house. Yeah, so the lot ends right after the house. So it's pretty tight because we asked if we could develop it, if we could do something. The city kind of said no with the zoning. And Kitchener zoning is pretty picky with stuff like that. 
However, uh, a big developer actually bought the, I think it's five lots right beside it, going all the way down the street, and they're building 102 units. So they're gonna be all brand new, mostly townhomes. So this is gonna just jack up our area again in the next two or three years. So we're really getting in before all of this is going on, which is kind of cool that that's even happening. I love that. I love this, and I like how you're familiar with the town, with the zoning. Most of our agents are in like City Hall all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to know this stuff because the Mickey Mouse, like person from Markham, say, you know, like me, oh, this looks great. Oh, I could do this, and then you tie yeah. up your money in that, and um, you can't go for it, and you're stuck with all these problems. There's one more question. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm just gonna read out really quickly here. Um, I always assume most people getting into real estate would fund their down payment reno using a HELOC from their principal residence, leaving them with HELOC interest to pay monthly, eating into cash flow. Yeah. Where do your investors using cash get it from? So 99% of the time, it is a HELOC. So they're gonna use it and then we'll pay them out when we do the refinance. How, and, and we do include those fees. This is where the 8,000, for example, on this one comes from, is from the HELOC fees. So we do pay for those. Um, but I do want to, if, Investors feel discouraged from buying properties because it then won't technically cash flow with a HELOC. Just think of it of if you partner with someone, you're giving up 50%, or if it's barely cash flow because of your HELOC fund, but you want 100% of it, you, know, you should really think hard about um, if you want to actually do that or run away. A lot of investors say, oh, I won't buy property because it won't cash flow you know, $1,000 or just cash flow 50 bucks because of my HELOC. Again, long term, think long term. It will be worth it if you buy a good property, especially a single family at that point where it's boring, consistent, um, less risk if you're only cash flowing 50, 100 bucks. So I would always urge people to use your HELOC as much as you can. Get into properties, use that money, and multiply your incomes. Well, in the, a case like this, I mean, it sounds like how many investors did you have on this property? This one is two others and me. Perfect. Okay, because I'm pretty simple. Yeah. So I know there's some people out there and they're like, oh, well, you could just get like 15 people together and buy a million dollar yeah. property. And I always say, why don't you just find one? Like, exactly, <laughs> just yeah. find the right person. So it sounds yeah. very clean. Yeah. And those people, yes, they may be loaning their cash, but with this 325000 that they're going to be getting back, yeah. well, they're going to be able to repay whatever their cost of borrowing exactly. is in there yeah. anyways. So who cares about the monthly cash flow? I mean, it really is kind of the long the long-term gain for sure. Can people ever do their registered funds with you as well? That's something I haven't really got into. It's, uh, I could definitely talk about it with specific people. Usually I have one partner per property. This is the only one so far where I've had two. It's usually mm -hmm. just one person every time, but it's something I'm, I'm definitely open to, especially as we start doing these bigger uh, multifamily flips. We also just bought you know, three townhomes, same kind of setup in Cambridge. Um, so we're doing that. So I really like the idea of flipping multifamily long-term. And so when you have the, I guess you're doing these as joint venture partners. Yeah. And they are the equity partner and you're the sweat equity partner. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I know, do you normally do things like say 50-50 or how does that work? So at this point, I don't put any money into any of my deals really. Um, I have so many partners coming on to provide all the money. What I do is provide the system. So I have the contractors that pretty much work for me all year round, which is why we kill these properties in two months or one month in renovations. I have the whole system. I know how to find tenants. I have the property managers and I run the whole business for as long as we're partners. So three years, five years, seven years, I do everything while they sit back and learn from me if they want, which is kind of how my program is set up. It's more of an apprenticeship program. So if you work with me, I'm going to teach you why we're doing it this way. Why are we using these color schemes? Why are we marketing in the ads this way to get this tenant? I teach you all of that. And then you have boring people like me who are like, I just want to grow my money. Yeah, actually a lot of, almost all my partners come on board with that uh, mentality. Of, I want to learn from you. I want to learn from you. But once I get into it and once the property's set, I don't really hear from them too often. They're very happy with just laying back. <laughs> And you know, like when we do this as a business, I'm the same way for joint, if, what, if we do joint ventures, um, you know, you shouldn't have to put your own money into the deal. Our expertise obviously speaks volumes, the acquisition, yes. the systems, the management, um, yes. it's, you're definitely holding your part. Uh, what I meant was on the, any refinance component or sale or monthly cash flow that does come in, is that yes. something you normally split, say like 50 
Yeah, so all profits are split 50-50. However, the way we have it set up for all of our properties so far is all the cash flow goes right back into the property's bank account every month. We're not going to draw from it like the other single families. We're making 150 bucks. We're not going to split $75 a month. That's useless. Um, so all the money goes back in so that if a tenant leaves or if something breaks, we have the money there. I don't have to go back to my partner and say, okay, we need more money. We have the money there. We're paying for it every single month. So we have a big party at the end. So we stack all the money and in five years when we sell, then we split everything 50-50, cash flow, appreciation, and mortgage pay down. Well, that is like an administrative nightmare if you guys are doling out 50 bucks oh, yeah. a month to split. But yeah. if you use it to set it aside, obviously you already have your maintenance and repairs, you have your vacancy yeah. rate, you have your property management, all that stuff set aside. But if yeah. you take that money and do your mortgage, your extra mortgage payments, um, it's amazing how mortgage pay down that can really help accelerate that yeah. even though normally you know with real estate investments um people are just doing this on their own it's not really worth accelerating your mortgage and paying it down faster but yeah. in this case with jvs rather than you know doing you know little little portions it really can make a huge difference at the end of the year you take that money or you know even every quarter you, you kind of make that extra payment yeah and exactly when you, do, when you pull that cash flow from the property it's just so much more. Yeah. This so is really nice. So here's a property on the market right now. So I'm just going to show some of the people here what's really on the market today. I've showed you some past examples. You're probably like, oh, that's too good. I can't get it anymore. I'll show you what's on the market now. So here's a little town home. I have one actually on this street, just like this. It does really well. I'll try and share the numbers here. I'm trying to find how to share the numbers on this one. Okay, there we go. Can you see the, the numbers now? Yes, 565 Park Group. Yep. So there's a property on the market right now for 294, right? 20% down payment, 58,000. Renovation costs estimated 15,000, which is kind of typical for a townhome this size. Closing costs, and transfer fees all in. Uh, and a sleep by night fund. If the people don't know uh, what that means, whenever we buy property with my partners and my clients, I always advise that we take one month's rent and we put it in the property's bank account on day one. So we have that money there in case there's repairs in the future. We're already building that sleep at night fund. So that's what that is if you don't know what that means. So our total investment on this property is $80,000 to buy with a mortgage payment of just over $1,000. This is calculated with a 3.5 mortgage rate over 30 years, which is what we're still getting right now typically for investors, 20% down. Uh, property taxes, our insurance, our, again, property manager, this is all taken care of. Our Total expenses are $13.74 a month, but the rent is $17.50. So we're cash flowing $3.75 on day one. So this, wow. is a live, this is a real property that's on the market right now. I've already sent it out to all my clients, but this is a, a real example of what I can find you on a regular basis. And that's plus utilities, right? That's plus utilities. So the tenant pays everything. I like that. I like that. I cannot believe that. This is such a phenomenal price, and it's so in such a great area as well. Yeah. So and go, this is a freehold townhome. So no that was a freehold townhome, yeah. yeah. Like, unlike your first condo town, I guess, you know, exactly. the disaster of condo fees. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. No, I love that. I love that. I'm trying to share the back to the property there. So here's another one on the market. This is a semi-detached. This is what we buy all the time. So here's an example of that. So a good part of Cambridge. We're still on the park view slide. Oh, it's another part for you? Yeah. Let's switch it back. Different? Nope. Hmm. You gotta love technology. Yeah. When it works, it's good. But it's amazing the fact that even like under $300,000 that yeah. properties are still available. I mean, you wouldn't get this in Barrie. You're not going to get this in St. Catharines. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice house. Yeah. So this is the semi-detached that we buy over and over again. Literally my favorite property of all investment types. So good area of, Cam of Cambridge. I'll go over the numbers on this one. So this one's 39 Mill Creek. It's currently on the market. Again, uh, 349. So again, we're right in that sweet spot of 340, 370. This is a very typical semi-detached single family. I can find you almost any day of the week in Kitchener. Renovations. There's no pictures on this one, so usually means we're in it for a little more. <laughs> so 15000 could be 20000 give or take. 
So all in, we're around the 90,000, which is what I always tell my clients. So 80 to 100,000 is what we're gonna be in for, for a typical semi-detached single family, all in, after renovations and everything. So there's like a $50,000 price difference between a town and a semi, basically. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And does that kind of go up for a house too? So if you're a house for more 400? Yeah, so the houses will be 450, 400. Those don't really work for investment purposes. A detached house will not cash flow in Kitchener. It has to be a semi or a townhome, typically. Mm -hmm. so the properties we're just doing. Which is work. great because the taxes are so much lower. Yes, Which they're much lower. Do yeah. you have high taxes, would you say, in Kitchener? I right? don't think so. In taxes in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge? They're all the same throughout. So Waterloo, we don't invest in at all because of the rental license. So it's only Kitchener and Cambridge. Uh, but the taxes are the exact same, really, between both cities. So, like here on a semi 214 a month, that's typical. So, between 200 and 220 a month, that's kind of the average uh, property taxes for a semi. That's so, very low. Yeah. Yeah. So, our monthly expenses are 1628. The rent is 1750. And the cash flow is 121. So, a lot of people would say, Matt, this is a shit property. <laughs> I'm not going to invest in property that makes $100. Wait, I showed you the example of what happened to our Elgin property over time. That's going to happen again for sure. So wait a couple of years. But what's different between this and the townhome is the tenant quality. The tenant quality, the semi task is going to be much higher. Uh, probably an upper blue collar workers or white collar workers. They're going to stay much longer than a, a townhouse. A townhouse is definitely a step up for most people before they buy. So these tenants will stay for three, four, or five years uh, on average. Excellent, excellent. I like that. I don't find that one pretty one boring. I think this looks fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Should we show more or running out of time? <laughs> sure, show more. We got anyone else any questions? Make sure you type your questions in. Are you back on the screen with the house? Yeah. I really like this house. What is your rule of thumb in rares? Are it all these like three bedroom, one bathroom, three bedroom, two bathroom, yard stipulations? What's your criteria? Yeah. So our single families, you always want three bedroom minimum. So never a two bedroom really for a single family, but there's an abundant amount of three bedrooms and it's usually one bathroom, which a lot of people freak out and say, there's only one bathroom all the way upstairs. It works for us all the time. It hasn't been an issue. If you can fit a second bathroom in the basement or on the main floor, that's just a huge bonus. But uh, you'll get almost the same rent anyway between a two bath or one bath. Yeah. That's kind of the formula we're doing. We had someone raise their hand. And if you're raising your hand, you can type your question in the chat box or the question box and we will cool. get to you. So here's an example of a, a newer duplex on the market right now. Is, is it showing on your screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the picture so we can see Fairly turnkey. Ooh. So this is the exact property. It's in a great area, actually right in the Fairview Mall area, which is where the main LRT station will be. So you're five minutes to the mall, five minutes to the LRT, all grocery stores, schools. So super high-end area, especially for multifamily here. Excellent. I see you're really well done. And we'll go back to the numbers on this one. So once you get in there like with that one and you kind of like update the backsplash and yeah and kind of like paint the cupboards yeah you could definitely even still add more value for sure yeah yeah so then you get one, that more that less tired yeah definitely so price on the market right now is five twelve eight hundred that's kind of typical for a newer um duplex that's actually a pretty good price actually even at that price well if you break it down per door then you're still you know yeah. less, like in that 250 range which yeah, exactly is incredible yeah so down payment, 102,000, renovations, really zero. It doesn't need anything. You could improve more, but it'll rent just fine as is. Closing costs, land transfer tax. So all in, 114,000. With our monthly costs, all the expenses, all utilities are split, which is a huge bonus for a duplex. Normally we pay gas and water and split hydros. Because this is a newer built one, everything is split. So it's really like only two single family properties. So all of our expenses, 2,355 a month. Our rent is 2,700 a month. Cash flow 344 on day one. So again, that's pretty good. That's really good cash flow. Yeah. That's really good cash flow. And all the cash flow really kind of, you know, it stays pretty steady throughout. I mean, I'm sure if this is a four unit, then you'd be up yeah. to almost, you know, like almost a thousand. So it really kind of, it blends, it sort of breaks down really nicely. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent, excellent. So we're kind of wrapped up for me. I can show you a lot more privately if anybody's interested, but uh, you can get a lot of my books or courses through my website. Just go to my YouTube channel or Instagram. I have a bunch of courses and three books, my podcast. So feel free to look at that. Um, how I can help you, there's two ways. So I can help you either as a real estate agent in Kitchener where I just help you find the property and then kind of set you up on the system. Or the second way, like I said, is where you partner with me in my apprenticeship style program where I do everything for us while teaching you, while doing properties that I've showed you um, just earlier. I think that's a very, very valuable program. And this is where they can find you on YouTube? Yeah, so you find me on YouTube at The Fruitful Investor or on Instagram at Matt Piche. So YouTube is where I put all of my strategies and tips, et cetera. Instagram is more for my personal day-to-day -day life. So if you want to follow me with what I'm doing every day, uh, what I'm promoting, et cetera, what I'm doing with my clients, my partners, that's more of a personal avenue. So I would say subscribe to both, please. <laughs> Excellent. No, and social media is all the way to go this day and age yeah. because it's really important. It allows people to really know um, who they are dealing with and they get For to sure. know, you know, the person who, who is behind these investments or behind the coaching or behind the advice. And I, I, exactly. I think it's a great way for people to really authentically get exactly. to know you if you're doing it the right way. 100%. I think you're probably the most authentic person oh, thank you. Um, I know. I met you about what? five years ago. <laughs> and, um, you know, really what you see is what you get. And there's yeah. nothing that makes me happier than seeing genuine, authentic people being successful by being themselves. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you're you. You're very normal, Matt. <laughs> thank you interesting yeah <laughs> very very genuine and very normal and we have one last comment before we go he says no questions great show see you at OREC in London awesome. next year there last year so I don't know if, if he met you there last year or <laughs> me there or maybe yeah. we both met him yeah, there last both, year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know about you but I love meeting new people and yeah. just kind of just sharing a story and more importantly, listening to other people and seeing what they're up to and seeing how we can help. Just yeah. like your YouTube channel um, is all about helping people. Yeah, 100%. And sharing your strategies with that abundance mindset, yeah. not a scarcity mode, always selling, selling. I yeah. think that's fantastic. So anyone who was watching, or if you're watching the replay, we will be sending the replay out as well. Um, you can touch base. I'd encourage you to follow Matt on YouTube, on Instagram, on any way you can follow him, follow him, uh, reach out to Matt. And if you want to reach out to us, uh, just shoot us an email at info at rpinvestments.ca. And we are more than happy to make the connection. So, Thank you so much for your time, Matt. This was a lot of fun. I can't wait to hop on this webinar with you again. And we're going to delve into a totally different topic, all about your amazing social media channels. Awesome. Can't wait. Uh, can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh, and to everyone else out there watching, join us next Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for your next Lunchtime Wealth Webinar series. Monica Jazik, Real Property Investments. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Bye.